hello guys welcome once more to another video in our youtube channel so in this video we look at southwest regional mock 2024 puma with mechanics paper 3 we are going to be looking at the very first question on a paper which came from the topic kinematics of particles or application of differentiation application of calculus specifically all right so the question reads a particle of mass 5 kilogram moves on a horizontal plane under the action of a force f at time t seconds where f has been given given that the particle p is initially at rest find the acceleration the velocity and the value of t at the instant when the particle moves parallel to the vector i now when t is 5 the particle receives an impulse of j newton seconds immediately after the impulse the velocity of p is 15 i minus 10 j find the magnitude of the impulse all right so this was one of the easiest questions on the paper straight to the point so let's get started all right so we begin with the first question which is asking us to find the acceleration of the particle so you have to know that acceleration is a vector quantity and you need to look at the informations given to you you have the mass and the force so we need to take the fact that the force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. The only force acting in the system is the force that was given to us. So there is no resistive force. So the, the force being equal to the mass times the acceleration, the mass was given as 5 and the force was also given. All right. So from there, we just have to give place. And then to get the acceleration, we just divide both sides by the mass and we get the acceleration in meters per second squared. And we are done. The second part, we, are need to, we need to find the velocity of the particle. We need to know that the velocity is the integral of the acceleration with respect to time, while the acceleration is the derivative of the velocity with respect to time. Integration and differentiation are reverse processes. They are brothers. All right. So the acceleration is dv by dt. So if I cross multiply, I get dv to be equal to a dt. This is a first order differential equation where I have already separated the variables so I can integrate. Integrating acceleration with respect to time, it is because the acceleration is in function of time. So if I integrate dv, I also need to integrate a dt. So I need to replace the a with what I had in the first equation. Then once I integrate dv, dv I get v. And when I integrate the acceleration, I just need to factorize the 1 on 5, which is a common factor between the common factor what is common between the i and the j components now we need to integrate 3 t squared we get 3 t cube on 3 the 3 cancels we get t cube we integrate 2 t we have 2 t squared on 2 the 2 cancels we just have t squared we are done with the i component now let's go to the j component we integrate 5 we get 5 t we integrate 4 t we get 4 t squared on 2 which is 2t squared but since this is an indefinite integral we need to add a constant of integration so the constant of integration is actually the initial velocity all right so now we need to use the initial condition which says that initially means that t is equal to zero the particle was at rest which means that the initial velocity is zero so the constant of integration is clearly zero so from there we can just rewrite the velocity in this form so this is the velocity it is easy right Let's proceed. All right, now let us find the value of the time at the instant when the particle was moving parallel to the vector i. Okay, so what does it mean by saying the particle is moving parallel to the vector i? Generally, the velocity of the particle is vxi plus vyj. vx is a component in the i direction and vy is a component in the j direction. So if you are moving parallel to the vector i it means that you are actually moving in the direction of the vector i okay and if you're moving in the direction of the vector i it means that your direction the component in the vertical direction of the velocity is zero there is no vertical component we are purely moving horizontally so your v will just be equal to vxi since there is no component of the velocity in a vertical direction so i just need to go back to my velocity which i have this is it and then i replace i equate the vertical component to zero the vertical component is 5t minus 2t squared when we equate to zero we can factorize t then we find the value of t t will give us two values zero 
and 5 divided by 2. But we need to verify which of the values are correct. Or if all the values are correct, we are going to take all the values. But you realize that when t is equal to 0, the particle was at rest. All right. So the, 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 the particle was not moving. So we cannot take uh, we cannot take t equal to 0. So we can just conclude that the velocity, the time taken, that is, we can conclude that the time at the instant where the particle moves parallel to the vector i is 5 divided by 2 seconds. If the particle was moving parallel to the vector j, then we are going to instead equate the, um, the, the, the i component of the velocity to be 0 and we find the time. So let's go to the last part of the equation, which is saying that when t is 5, the particle receives an impulse of j newton seconds immediately after the impulse. The, ve the velocity of the particle is 15i minus 10j meters per second. We need to find the magnitude of j. j is the impulse. is a vector quantity. So generally, impulse is change in momentum, and momentum is mass times the velocity. So the impulse is a change in the mass times the velocity. So we need to take the final momentum, which is mass times final velocity minus the initial momentum which is mass times initial velocity but the mass is common and the mass is five so all we need to do is that we need to find the final velocity and the initial velocity but the final velocity has been given to us in the equation so we need to find the initial velocity and the initial velocity in this case is not the velocity when the particle was at rest no it is the velocity when t was equal to five because we are dealing with a certain part of the motion, all right? Because the particle received the impulse of j newton second when t was equal to 5 and not when t was equal to 0. So the initial velocity we are concerned with here is that velocity that the particle had when t was equal to 5 seconds. So when t is equal to 5, I just need to come and replace 5 in, in my in my in my velocity at time t and i simplify 5 cube minus 5 squared will give us 125 minus 25 100 but there is a factor here 1 divided by 5 all right so all you need to do you are the one to do this you need to replace t with 5 t with 5 t with 5 and t with 5 and remember that when you get your answers you have to divide by 5 doing that you're going to have 20i minus 5 g meters per second that is the initial velocity in other words the velocity at t equal to 5 so if you do the difference between the final and the initial we just have to subtract like terms so 15i minus 20i is negative 5i why negative 10j minus negative 5j is negative 5j so the, the the impulse will be the mass which is 5 times they find the change in the velocity, which is minus 5i minus 5j newton seconds. So we can multiply by the 5 and we get negative 25i minus 25j. So you are now left to find the magnitude. So tell me your answer of the magnitude of this impulse in the comment section. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you check out the other solutions to the other questions as you navigate through this channel. See you guys in the next video and make sure you share this video with your friends.